Hello everybody, welcome to your Lighting Critique. So today we're gonna to take a look at Sarah's demo reel first. So it's a great demo reel, it combines industry work with personal projects. It's, it's a lovely combination of both. It's an uh, opportunity for you to flex your skills both in a collaborative environment and in a personal environment. The uh, the one, uh, so obviously I'm not gonna give any notes on the, the shots in the film. They are, they are locked and loaded and done. Obviously you can't always do breakdowns and things like that. But the one thing I would say is that I think you can just go ahead and cut them together. This like hard cut out and then fade in of each shot is a little, um, it's a little bit, let's see, this one actually cuts directly together. Oh no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, there we go, it goes to black. So I would just cut that out and just have them, edit, you know, edit them together as normal. Um, in terms of the flow of everything, I would actually consider pushing up your personal project a little bit earlier in the, in the reel. We get about, so after about, um, you know, we're, we're in it for about a minute and 15 seconds of theatrical work, which is which is uh, great. But I think that th there was a point at about 45 seconds in that I was like, I wonder if she's going to have some personal projects on here or something with a little more of a breakdown to show the process. Now, the individual projects look good. I think that they are all uh, successfully done. The one thing, and I, I really was happy to see that you had a breakdown in here, but a little bit. So the breakdown is a little bit specific to just the background. Also, I it's, it's interesting because you're like, this is personal work, but you're just doing the lighting and compositing. I, you, you put this in the, in the attached breakdown list, breakdown sheet, but it'd be, I'd, I'd be interested to know where the other components came from, whether this was like downloaded from somewhere or whether this was a collaborative project. For me, it was always, it always mattered a little bit. The other thing, let's see if I can get this to play again. Oh, Vimeo. Um, the other thing that, just reload it. Um, the other thing about it is that, so the breakdown is interesting in that it it just really focuses on the background. Go to it. And Vimeo is really struggling today. There we go. Okay, so, so do you see how it just focuses on the background? I think that, well, two, there are two things about it. One, is that I want to see some more character work. Two, I want to see some more reference material. So, Because this is your opportunity to show your whole progress, to show that you understand the image making process. So you start with idea, concept, uh, and you take it through through final image at the end. Now the cloud movement on this one is a little, uh, a little interesting to me. So I was looking at it and it was just because I saw the breakdown. It's that like, some of the clouds are moving very quickly and some of them are totally static, like the far background ones. And they, it just it just feels like there's a little bit of a disconnect there. So I'd like to, to see some uh, reference to that. And then also, th this character's eyes shift during the breakdown. So the first shot, they're looking forward and then it looks like you shift frames on it. So I would say, you know, maybe just lock that down so it's all just just the first frame of the shot. Not that, not that big of a deal, but just something that I noticed. It's like... Again, this isn't actually something that matters, but this is one of those attention to detail things that um, that uh, people will look at. Now, one other thing to notice, if, if you can get in there on this shot, there's a couple of like depth of field issues going on that one is like there's a little bit of a black outline around it, and it's usually a multiplied edge in, in Nuke. So just just take a look and make sure you're not, you don't have anything goofy. There's something goofy going on on the edge of this um, uh, log. Also, actually the depth of field is doing a couple, let's see, let's go back to, the, so doing a couple weird things. So I see, you know, in focus, out of focus foreground, in focus characters, out of focus pillar, out of focus pillar, out of focus pillar, out of focus pillar. Actually this one's out of focus halfway up and down. Um, but the background is totally in focus. So I think that you, in order to make this play out a little better, you would, you would want that background to be out of focus as well. Um, this guy's looking good. I, I really like this project. Uh, the animation on this is super fun. This is from the Unreal Marketplace, I believe. And uh, it's super rad. Uh, good, good entrance, like good lighting all around. Again, I just want to see a little bit more of your process in terms of reference and storytelling. So it's like, this is a great opportunity to show contrast between these two characters because they otherwise they look pretty similar. It's like a Transformers movie where they all just kind of look alike when they're in an action sequence. So it's kind of like, 
um, you know, you got this this one entering here, this one entering here. Really like the reveal of like the silhouette, and then it steps into the light. That's awesome. But it's like I just want to see some reference images and the thought process that went into the storytelling of that. That would that would really um, really kind of seal it up. But overall, and then uh, and then this project here is looking looking really good too. So again, same deal, just reference imagery. If you can, and you have to do it for all of them, just uh, maybe one or two of them out of the three personal projects. But overall, your work is really sound, and that's the most important thing. It's just a matter of packaging it up and presenting it a little bit better. It would be great. So really nice work overall there, Sarah. Okay, let's hop into some other work. So we'll just make sure it's nice and big. Um, I want to start with... Um, Mohammed's here, so uh, my apologies again on uh, first missing your work and then, <laughs> and then grabbing the wrong one the second time around. So the only thing I was saying, I'll just reiterate what I wrote down, which was a couple things. Number one was that, let me grab a pen here. So shadows like this, and I'm not quite sure what this is here. Super tight, dark like hard edge shadows don't really exist when light's passing through a window. Windows have a tendency to diffuse sunlight down a little bit so that, that tends to get a little softer, especially when it gets a little further away from the window. Um, so that would be one thing there. Number two, uh, same note still applies, like this part of the character's face, it's all kind of a consistent tone. And one of the things about skin is that we have a lot of oil um, in our pores, so, so getting some more reflection on this side will really help break that up a little bit and create some more, um, you know, have a better understanding of this cheek structure and some other stuff going on in there. And the third one is, you've got a really nice bit of light wrapping around this character's face. I think that's that's working uh, really, really well and creating some lovely shaping. The shadow, again, here could be a little bit softer, so I would increase the radius of that light. But, th but this character is, I, I think we can, even if it's creating a separate key light uh, just for this character, and light linking it, it would just be a matter of wrapping it around the face just a little bit more. I'd love to see that same level of, of wrap that we're getting on her, on him as well. Um, and then the final thing, and I, it was just the amount of subsurface scattering we're seeing on some of these components. It's just there, it's, it's very, very strong. And I think that it's, it's good to have some of that, but a lot of that um, just tends to be too much, especially like on this ear, when it's on the opposite side from the key light, it's just a little bit strong. Um, like it's fine to get that like a little bit less than that there, especially because you know you can believe that the sun's coming in from behind here. But yeah, just just something to be aware of there. And then yeah, also just look into whatever that shape is. I don't know what's causing that. It might just be his shadow, but but just might want to check that out. So that that that's a good spot for you to to begin with from there. So I think that would be good. All right, let's take a look at this Fan Ho inspired work here. Now one thing about Fan Ho and I love. I've probably mentioned this many times in my lectures, but I love Fan Ho. Love the structure of what this artist brings to the table. So again, you'll look at lots of leading lines coming down here. Um, got the leading lines coming up here. Uh, we got the dark foreground to really kind of vignette the scene right in here. And then also just an understanding of lifted dark values, medium dark values here, and then the darkest darks here in the foreground to really kind of build us forward. With that in mind, I think we can uh, do something similar here. I think the biggest one for me is like really, really adjusting the black points so that uh, it's it structures back to front. So we want the most lifted back here. We want mid tone values here, and then the darkest here in the in the foreground to kind of create that vignetting. Now there's one area, and this looks like a little bit of like a broken um, material. So I just check into it. Is uh, this wall right in here? That looks very, very black to me. So that, but that, that's not like, that looks like it's missing the material. So I would just double check that there. Um, there's a lot of, there's some, there's something going on underneath the chin of the character. I'm not quite sure what that is. I would just look into that. Um, and then in terms of the, the light coming down, feel free to tighten up those rays a little bit. So they're a little bit sharper and a little more distinct that lead the line right here. And then you can adjust because I'm really looking like this is really nice here. Like there's some really nice subtle things going on like this, this kind of shape. I almost, I wanted to really kind of frame the character. And so it might be a matter of just tightening it down a little bit and just bringing it, a, like bringing that line a little bit more central so that like all this stuff goes into the darkness. But I don't want to take away because there's some really nice elements. Like if you just kind of focus in right in here, 
like this light versus this amount of bounce coming up in here looks really good. Looking around these pots too, just like the rim and the amount of bounce light coming in there is looking really good. Um, the other thing to check out, just double check the character's feet. They look like they're in the ground. So just, just something to be aware of there. And then the final thing is, so this character, again, it's gonna be silhouetted. There's gonna be a little light wrapping around the side. The character, the story is the character looking at this door, right? So maybe maybe I was wrong about keeping it tight to the character earlier. Maybe it's more about like do we want to highlight the door as a um, as a reference point? So really the the light kind of comes down here, and then we really tighten it up more on the backside. So really create this connection point between these two, because maybe this is a childhood home. Maybe this is a home of somebody who passed away or something. I'm not really sure, but um, I would just make sure to to to. If we're gonna tell the story and the door is of significance, I would find a way to highlight this connection between the two by circling the light around them, brightening the door a little bit, making something a little bit more impactful to really draw the eye there. Uh, but yeah, that, those, are, those are the biggest ones I, I would take away from this one right here. But really, uh, really, really beautiful start. All right, so next up, yeah, we've got this one. Is, we've got some um, reference from Blade Runner, I believe. So again, kind of a similar fan ho approach. Oh my gosh, Photoshop drives me nuts with this sometimes. You can't just like slide, slide dabs around. Because if you do it once the wrong, you gotta be like absolutely perfect. Anyway, okay, great. So again, same idea of structure of, you know, lifted blacks in the distant, mid-tone blacks and then dark blacks in the foreground. Uh, same thing here, dark blacks, medium blacks, lifted. Um, you've got some of that going on. I think you could push it further. I think that none of the stuff back here is of extreme importance. So you can push, you can lift those values and create even less contrast and more, um, more value back there. One of the things about the bright light overhead is that if I kind of just like squint my eyes at the image, my eye just really wants to go up into here. So the biggest thing is like, how are we going to direct the eye down lower? And I think that you can, you can start here. Um, but you're gonna to wanna to create some lines that lead down into this region and then create a slightly, I would create a slightly bigger spot on the ground. This is, this is and I'm, I'm just gonna say one option. And then I would eliminate like this one because I actually don't know where, that, that, that light direction doesn't make sense to me. So if this is, um, depending on the light source, it feels like it would be far enough above this thing that all the, these lines would be a little bit more in parallel with each other. Uh, I would also consider darkening, I'm trying to think, those, those, I'm looking at those windows back behind there. What is going on? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Got stuck there for a second. All right. So I would consider darkening some of these windows because again, the contrast that they're pulling in again wants to draw my eye up. I like the little pocket of light back behind this. I think that's working well. Um, the only other, let me try and think. The only other thing that, you, so that was like one idea. The other idea is to do what's kind of happening more in these images, which is the main character is more silhouetted. So it's more like, um, you know, lifted back here, light, running more parallel, but instead of hitting her directly is actually striking back behind her. And then that's allowing this shape to really get rimmed up and allowing her form to be a silhouette in the scene as opposed to um, as opposed to being directly hit with the light. That's another way, again, it's kind of a fan ho thing way of doing it where it's all about uh, structuring the light around it and then, and then uh, getting the character to read dark over light from there. But yeah, I'm thinking this is, but overall this is looking, um, you're on the right path. So biggest biggest things to work on either way, regardless if you go light over dark or dark over light for the character, is get those those light rays a little more parallel. I would reduce the amount of light in the um, in the windows back there. I like, oh, by the way, I do, I do like this idea of like this pocket of light coming from like some sort of bounce or something else. It's just a little bit too, uh, it's a little bit too lifted. You have to be careful because that is the only red element in this very, very cool blue scene. 
So it does, again, that's another one that kind of draws the eye up there. And it's like, I want to, there doesn't seem to be much of a payoff from the story up there. So I just want to make sure that we're, it's all kind of together. But yeah, this is coming along nicely. Yes. And again, you know, uh, I like the updated colors working, working much better. Excited to see um, how you go and build out some more, um, like some stronger materials and stuff like we were talking about before. Just, you know, making sure that. There's distinction between the boots and the t-shirt and the skirt and the hair and all that good stuff. So let me know if you've got questions on that. All right, and finally, we've got uh, Tam here. Really beautiful stuff. So, same, again, we're going to go back. This is all going to be about um, layering things together from from back to, uh, to front. So I uh, have looked at a lot of um, Spider-Verse reference, and there's definitely some atmospheric fall-off and atmospheric perspective in there. So the idea of... Um, you know, creating a little bit more of a lifted value back here and then allowing that to build so that this is the most contrasty element. I'm also wondering, because I, I was thinking about, I was looking at this. I also don't know if we, eh, we probably, I was looking at Miles Morales here and wondering if we couldn't go a little bit more contrasty in this region. extreme but like something more like that and then over here to this side let's just go ahead and do this we'll just mock this out too um, just do a copy paste here and then I will adjust the curves just up those Midtones. And then we can get a little more saturated back there. Sorry, this is this is gonna be a little bit janky. Just increase the blues. Pull down the saturation a little bit more. And then overall, it's a little bit, a little bit bright. So let's go ahead and darken that down. So maybe something a little bit more like, like this to kind of separate the foreground a little bit more from the background. Oh, and this, like. Something along this line, so you kind of brighten, brighten and add a little more contrast to the foreground, and then like, you know, add add some more um, blue hues and more atmospheric fall off in here. And then for the windows up here, I think Mason gave you the comment of just adding some more variation in here. Um, and I totally agree. It's just a matter of putting some primitive shapes in there to break up the light to make it look like there's a cabinet or a desk or or something in this space. So it's not all just like consistent light color. And you can even do it up in, up in these windows on the screen right hand side too. You can just put some, like back here, just put like a, a cube in, in there and that'll, that'll work out really well. Um, <laughs> overall, this is looking really great though. Really beautiful. I am... Only one I'm looking at here is now is this sign, and it's just on the side, and I guess I guess that's okay, but I'm just I, I haven't I haven't I lived in New York for a long time I don't recall seeing anything like that so if if that's intentional awesome if not just want to draw attention to it that drew the eye oh last one last one just noticed this is this guy right here this lamp right here these have a nice bit of having like the bright light bulb within them this guy feels a little bit flat and that's the closest so i would just i mean you could even just comp it in there and just add like a little dot there uh to brighten that up but all in all this is like so all that being said this is all very nitpicky stuff overall it's really really beautiful um and i think it's i think you're i think it's really well done i think it's a very complex scene and, and you've you've tackled some really difficult challenges here and i think that's it's really beautiful overall all right, everybody, that is it for today. Uh, so if you have any questions, let me know, and I will look forward to seeing you again on Friday. So Friday I'm traveling, so I probably won't be able to do a video critique, but I will do some uh, written critiques for you all, and I will see you then. All right, take care, everyone.